Hello Year 9 and welcome to your next Poetry PowerPoint. Before we start, can you please make sure you've got all your materials ready? That includes a pen, paper or the remote learning booklet, either on the screen or a printed copy. Thank you and then when you're ready, move on to the next slide. So let's begin with a quick do now quiz based on all the poems that we've studied. So I'd like to spend no more than two minutes answering these questions and then move on to the next slide where I'll go through the answers. Right, so let's go through the answers. So number one, the poem that's a sonnet is Ozymandias. Number two, the name of the artist in My Last Duchess is Fra Pandolf. Number three, the thing that the poetic voice hears is mind forged manacles and manacles are like handcuffs. Number four, the emigre begins almost like a fairy tale. There once was a country. And the final one, the thing that appears in the prelude is there hung a huge darkness. Now give yourself a mark out of five and move on to the next slide when you're ready. So let's move on to the poem that we're going to study and analyse today. And the poem that we're going to study is called Tissue by Imtiaz Darfa. Now this is one of the most controversial poems in the cluster. Um, and it's a bit like Marmite. People either love it or hate it. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that, which um, we'll discuss as we're going through. Now, the most important thing to remember, though, is even if you don't completely understand it by the end of this PowerPoint, please don't panic, as it's a poem that does puzzle a lot of people, including a lot of teachers. Um, but one of the reasons for that is because that's the beauty of it, because it's open to so many different interpretations. And we'll look at a few interpretations today um, and when you get back to school the teachers will um, clarify any misconceptions you might have or they'll go with they'll go through it in more detail so when you're ready please move on to the next slide okay so let's make a start so the first thing i'd like you to do is to make predictions based on the title of the poem Start thinking about what this word might mean to you. Um, what do you think of when you see this word? And there's a few questions on, as well on the slide to, uh, to give you a prompt, such as what is the purpose of paper? And how many different things do you use paper for in an average day? Just to give you a little bit of a, a boost, uh, if you're not too sure. And once you're ready, let's go through to the next slide and we'll discuss some of your answers. OK, so let's go through your predictions. So the first thing you might have thought of is tissue, as in um, tissue paper, um, tissue that you blow your nose on. Um, and that's good because that's obviously the title. Um, but there's a few others that you might have thought of as well, such as tissue and where it comes from. Um, so you might have thought of paper. Um, some of you might have thought of more uses of paper, such as receipts things that um, have details of your your bank details, your bank statement. Um, you might have thought of books where um, knowledge is stored. Um, and those biologists out there might have thought about tissue that um, comes from our cells, from our human bodies. Now, this is great because for this poem, like I said to you earlier, there are so many different interpretations. And one of the things that you'll notice when you do read this poem is that you'll see little elements of all of these things. So in a few moments, we will go through the poem and you'll see. Um, and these are the things that we're going to be exploring more de in more detail and seeing how they relate to the power and conflict um, themes. OK, so I'll move on to the next slide where we'll learn a, a little bit more about the poet. Okay, I'd like to spend about five minutes on this task. 
all you need to do is read the information on the slide or in your booklet and summarize the information as briefly as you can in four bullet points. And one of the reasons for this task is sometimes when you take information and interpret it as your own, um, it makes it easier for you to remember. So this is a really good tool for that and it will help you to understand a little bit more about the poet MTS Darker. So five minutes, off you go. Okay, so now it's time to read the poem. So what I'd like you to do is to either read the poem first of all, um, or you could listen to the poet reading the poem um, using the link on the right hand side, but come back to it and read it through yourself a few times as well. Because sometimes with poetry, you do need to read it two or three times just to digest it. Um, and this will help you when we're analysing it in a few moments. Now, I'd like you to summarise the poem in your own words using the three questions on the slide or in your booklet. This is just to help you consolidate your understanding of it. Um, and it shouldn't take you more than um, five to five minutes really because it's just your initial thoughts and then we'll go through the uh, some of the themes some of the ideas uh, on the next slide so I hope you enjoyed that and the reading um, and it's given you a bit of food for thought um, sometimes when you read a poem, especially without the teacher there, it's actually better because you can make up your own opinions about something, you can trust your gut feeling about it, and it allows you to start thinking about some of the themes in the poem without somebody telling you um, what, what they are. Um, explicitly so it's often a good thing to read a poem first of all on your own just to digest it yourself and make your own uh, interpretations about it I hope it hasn't completely thrown you off because it is one of the poems that sometimes people don't completely understand straight away but that's one of the most wondrous things about it as well because there are so many different things to say about it and when I go through some of the thoughts um, from the poem um, you'll notice that actually it's not just about one thing there's lots and lots of different things about it that are important so one of the main things that hopefully um, you might have gathered is that it's about the fragility of life okay and paper is something that's presented as having the power to change something which goes fits in with the um, cluster um, and despite its fragility, the fact that it can actually be weakened and torn apart, um, despite that, actually, it has so many things that are important recorded on it or um, things that are made from it that actually it's very, very powerful. Um, and one of the main messages that MTS Darker might be trying to present to us is that actually um, humans could change things for the better too if they spent less time worrying about meaningless things. Um, so I'll go through a bit more of the poem with you. Um, so the first few quatrains, now a quatrain is when there are four lines in a stanza. So the first few create a sense of something that's fragile okay um, but she shows us that paper is important because it's used in books uh, and it's used, used for um, recording religion which is important because that's how we learn about um, religion especially from our ancestors um, and it also shows us that it has the power to change us um, through our journey through life. Uh, another way that she shows us the power of paper is that it carries our origins. So um, it's where you can record family history, birth, life, death, etc. 
so it's an important record um, tool as well now the second few um, quatrains um, you might have noticed that there's a little bit about the weakness of paper and that could be showing uh, showing us or revealing to us that we're like paper as well we're temporary stru structures like the buildings you mentioned so we should embrace the light okay because that's powerful as well um and she does go into a little bit more detail such as paper might be seen as unsuitable for building things any anything substantial in the real world however um maps are used for it um, an architect draws the um, building on paper first so it's still important okay um, and the reason as well that maps are important because it might be that she's trying to say well actually um, there's a lot of issues with maps because there's borders and division where there could be unity so really it could be a, a criticism of that as well um, and some of the other things that you might have noticed near the end of the poem um, is the fragility um, where the writer sees the living power in something as delicate as skin so we're all made from tissue therefore we're all equal especially in our fragility um, and there's a few other things that you might have discussed uh, sorry you, you might have thought about as well and like I said to you before this poem will be uh, will have lots and lots of different ideas around it so it's um, important um, not to dismiss anything because then you can discuss it with your teacher when we get back um, and I'm sure you'll all come up with lots and lots of different um, ideas to help your understanding of it as well okay so let's go to the next slide where we'll go into a little bit more analysis now so for this task I'd like you to have a look at some of the um, vocab used in the poem so these are just some of the words that might have stood out to you um, and they're all on the left hand side some of them you'll know some of them you might need to um, research a little bit more to help you with the definition but once you've done that have a read of the word in context where it sits in the poem and then start thinking about what this line might suggest what it might mean and if you need to um, go back to the poem and have a look at it in context again um, have a listen to or have a read of what we talked about in the last slide about what the poem's about um, and then start thinking about your interpretations and start writing them on the right hand side and then for this task if you need to you can spend about 20 minutes on it um, just because you might need to go back to the poem um, to help you and then once you're ready move on to the next slide so for this task, um, I've broken down the poem in about uh, three different slides and all the questions in the booklet as well. What I'd like you to do is to go through the poems and go through the questions alongside it and start thinking about what you think this poem might um, suggest. Um, think about the connotations of some of the words used um, and your interpretation of it as well. And then once you've finished that, uh, you can go through some of the answers um, a few slides down. So I've mentioned the word fragility um, earlier and I'd like you to use this word and I'd like you to link it to the poem because it is a metaphor for the fragility of life. So I'd like to use this word 
and start answering some of the questions, completing some of the tasks, um, just to help your understanding of it and to help you use this word when you do talk about this poem. And then when you're ready, move to the next slide. Spend no more than 10 minutes, 10 minutes on this um, activity, please. So this is a quick five minute activity. I'd just like you to find me the line that shows some of these statements. Okay, so the first example has been done for you. So all you need to do is find me the line in the poem that matches these statements. I'd like you to have a think about some of the big ideas in this poem. So looking at this checklist, which which themes do you think fit in with this poem? Okay, once you've done that, you can move on to the next slide and we'll go through the answers. So I've ticked some of the themes that the poem explores. Now you might be thinking power of humans. This actually could go the other way, so it could show the lack of power from humans. So it could be very similar to Ozymandias and actually the fact that he thought he was powerful but loses this power. Um, so that would be a relevant theme. Um, you could go over the power of nature because the, the sunlight, the weather seems to be more significant in the end. Um, another, another theme that you might co um, cover is human essence. The fact that um, all these buildings are all fleeting um, structures that actually are nothing compared to nature. Okay, so our final activity, unless you're targeted a grade 7 to 9 or you're actually pushing yourselves to get into those higher grades, um, if you are doing that, then can you please do the additional task that's in the book list where I'd like you to watch a video um, using Mr. Brook and answer a few questions based on tissue. And there will be more additional information on that. But again, these are things that will be covered by your teacher later on. But this is to give you a bit of a push ahead um, to help you think about this poem in more detail. Um, but everyone needs to complete this task. It's the essay question to fit in with this poem. Um, you need to be aiming for two paragraphs again. And the question for you is, how does the poet make the connection between paper and human life? Now again, these are just a set rules really for when you're writing a paragraph. Please ensure that you've got a clear point at the beginning which answers the questions as best as you can and it just informs the reader this is what my paragraph is going to be about. Um, don't forget to use quotations and zooming in um, and the final thing think about what kind of contextual remarks you can make. Where there's not obvious context like there is in some of the other poems um, you talk about the poet because even her ideas is classed as contextual knowledge. Okay, so for here, let's have a look at our model paragraph and you'll see an example of how the um, poet is referred to. So paper is presented as having the power to change things despite its fragility, which means that humans could change things for the better too if they spent less time worrying about meaningless things. In tissue, we learn that humans have the power to change the world, but how they are using the power is questioned and challenged by Imtiaz Darker. So can you see there's a little bit there about the poet and that fits in and that will get you marks for context. By using the religious imagery of the Quran, which has had its pages smooth and stroked and turned transparent with attention, we witness how truly influential we are. We have the power to unite millions of people through time and share some of the greatest stories man has ever heard so that we now act as best as we can. Because religion and religious books often give us information and they give us ideas on how our ethics and how to behave in life. When this is done well, we can truly use our power to shape the world in a wonderful manner. 
So these are some of the interpretations based on your ideas. It could be um, what you think MTS Darka might be presenting as well. But it's all about you analysing something, taking taking something from the taking something from the poem, and using the using analysis to help you think about what kind of interpretations you can make about certain words. And one of the activities that you used for that is when you looked at um, those sing single word zooms. And they will give you a lot of ideas on things that you can say because there's always things to say about every single word in a poem. So have a go at that. Um, spend about 20 minutes on this task and then share your ideas with your teacher who will provide you with a whole class feedback sheet on it. Um, and that's it from me. Thank you and I hope you've enjoyed this poem as much as I have.